Well, Shannon, I'm excited to be with you. Welcome to the broadcast. Uh, Thank on you. The Convene podcast. Uh, I think many people may know you, but many people may not. So I'm going to embarrass you with a little bit of a bio. Uh, you have really extensive government and private experience. You worked on Capitol Hill as a legislative assistant for a couple of U.S. senators, director for the Center for Faith and Opportunity Initiatives at the uh, HHS. You've been the chief of staff and chief operating officer at Family Research Council. And I love their vision, promoting a culture in which all human life is valued, families flourish, and religious liberty thrives. Got your JD from George Washington University School of Law. Yes, Two grown sons, and maybe the most fun part, you run half marathon. Yes. I am a little nutty that way. It, it's a, a good outlet to get out and do something completely different than this policy world I live in. So there yes, sir. Go. Well, you're coming to us from Washington, D.C., and I'm in uh, the L.A. area, so we're coast to coast and everything in between. But I'm afraid that there's some people who might not know about Christian Employers Alliance. And I would love you to talk about the vision and the history and what what is CEA and why should somebody want to pay attention? Yes, sir. Thank you. I really appreciate it, Greg. Uh, Christian Employers Alliance is an alliance to support Christian-owned businesses, whether for-profit or nonprofit. About 20% of our members are nonprofit businesses. Um, and in order to join CEA, you sign a, an orthodox statement of faith. So these are people who genuinely um, believe that living out their faith in everyday life is their calling, uh, that it's not just limited to church on Sundays or the privacy of their homes, but they want to live out their faith um, in the way that they run their businesses, in the way that they um, engage in their communities. And this is the heart of who CEA is. Our mission really is twofold. Uh, we want to unite, equip, and represent Christian-owned businesses to protect their religious freedom. That's the Matthew 516 piece, salt and light um, in the public policy and legal space. And we do that to provide opportunities for employees, businesses, and communities to flourish. And that's the John 1010 piece that we want people to live out the abundant life in their, in their private lives, in their business lives, in their communities, but they can only do that if we protect religious freedom. So those are the two pieces of really what drives our heart and our mission. Um, I am here in the DC area, have lived and worked here way longer than I like to admit, um, but uh, the gray hair sort of gives me away sometimes. Um, have been here 37 years next month, um, and really uh, have a sense of calling that God called me to this space uh, for this very moment, that in, in light of what we're seeing across our nation, that the engagement of Christian business owners is absolutely critical. Mm, thank so you. what what does CEA do? You want me to go on, or you want to stop? Yeah. Me? Well, here, here's I think some of our listeners are uh, in a group of business men and women that meet, and they talk about their business, and they talk mm -hmm. about leadership, and they talk about marketing, and they talk about their finances, and they talk about sales, right. and, they, and, and they and they engage with each other to pray and to support each other. I'm afraid there's some people out there listening that are kind of saying. I'm not sure what 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 do I need CEA for? Right. And it's really critical that they understand that because it's really mission critical uh, in the age that we're in. So talk about that. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Well, there are really several things that CEA does uniquely um, and better than anyone else. First, we're the voice of the Christian business owner. You know, you have other business organizations like the Chamber of Commerce or National Association of Manufacturers who might represent your interests when it comes to government regulation or when it comes to tax policy, those kinds of things. But unfortunately, they tend to be on the, the wrong side of the policy decisions when it comes to Christian ethical concerns like life or biblical sexual ethics or religious freedom. So one of the main debates we're in the midst of right now is um, how we deal uh, with the transgender community and the Biden administration has redefined the term sex to not mean male and female, 
um, as we believe in a biblical sexual ethic, but to include this broad expanse of, um, of a definition of what, what should be treated as sex. And this has significant implications for Christian business owners because the EEOC requires them to cover transgender transition in their healthcare policies. And so many of them uh, would not support that. And we obviously, um, as believers, we love and see the image of God in every individual. We would not want anyone mistreated. Uh, we want to treat them with honor and dignity, but we also want to live out our faith um, in, in our everyday life and in our businesses. So we represent that voice that is the unique voice of Christian business owners on these kinds of concerns. The second thing we do that's really critical, I think, for people to understand is that when you're a member of CEA, we can represent you um, as the client in lawsuits to protect your interests. So this is really how CEA was founded um, back in 2016, when there was the mandate concerning abortion and abortion-inducing drugs being a part of the healthcare policies of businesses around the country, a group of Christian business owners came together and said, we're not doing that. We don't support that. We don't think that is the way to love the women in our community and in our workplaces who are experiencing unplanned pregnancies. We're not going to do that. And so they filed a lawsuit and won that lawsuit, giving a national injunction for all of our members, present and future, to not have to cover abortion or abortion-inducing drugs in their healthcare plans. And the unique thing about the way this operates, Greg, is that there's this legal principle called associational standing. And what it means is that our members can stand behind the shield of CEA. So on some of these hard issues, and frankly, these are the hard issues in this cultural moment that we're living in, CEA goes out on the tip of the spear to represent uh, Christian business owners, but our members do not have to be exposed for their corporations or them individually. We go out and represent them under this principle of associational standing. So that's really huge um, in protecting Christian business owners from this uh, cancel culture that we are all seeing around us every day. So we're the voice of Christian business owners. We're the client in legal cases. So groups like um, Pacific, Justice Institute, who I know is a friend of yours, um, Alliance Defending Freedom, uh, First Liberty Institute, these legal organizations play the attorneys in those cases, but CEA is the client. And so we represent uh, the, the interests of Christian business owners. Mm -hmm. um, we also provide opportunities for, member, for our members and prospects to come together just to have encouragement with each other, to interact with other uh, Christian business owners. And I know this is much of what you do in Convene and the importance of just the fellowship um, and engagement with other believers, the encouragement that that provides. And so we do that um, a couple of times a year and in, in phone calls and that kind of webcast that we do uh, just to provide the support and encouragement for our members and prospects. Um, we also do, I do a weekly update uh, from the DC area that touches on exactly what's going on, what's going on in the administration, what's happening in Congress, uh, what do they need to know about legal cases that are coming up that might have implications for them. That kind of uh, weekly update every Friday that goes out just to keep them informed about what's going on. So those are some of the things that, that we do here that is a unique uh, gift that we bring to the Christian business community. Hmm. Very, I would say very different than uh, what Convene does. Absolutely. Or CBMC or Truth at Work or C12. Right. You are uh, uh, standing alongside these organizations uh, doing some very substantive things in the area of news and updates, in the area of a voice, in the area of advocacy, representation, and then gathering uh, where you uh, talk about matters that uh, you, you've, you've referenced. But here's Maybe here's, uh, if I can say it, uh, uh, maybe even in a little stronger way, there might be somebody out there who's saying public policy, religious freedom. I kind of thought that was a focus on the family thing. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Everything's fine. It's going to be fine. You Mm -hmm. and I have had some discussions where you've said you just kind of want to nicely shout out to people. Mm -hmm. Things are not fine and things are coming that would really be head turners. So maybe talk about uh, time to wake up. Sure, absolutely. Well, first, I'd like to just say that Christian business owners, Christian business leaders are obviously doing amazing things, right? They're loving their families. They're involved in their businesses, promoting their communities, their employees. They're doing great things. And in all that busyness, I just think sometimes they're not as focused on what's happening um, in the cultural conversation and that's, you know, that's where I'm living, right, Greg? So this is obviously, uh, this is the arena that God has called me to. Um, I think it's really important for our business leaders to understand that there are threats that are coming that will deeply affect them. And the most recent one um, that came out of the administration just a week and a half ago um, is that the administration is now rec- now calling for um, a vaccine mandate for any employer with 100 or more employees. And so you either have to do uh, make sure that your employees are vaccinated or you have to do weekly testing. And that raises concerns from constitutional concerns. The president really doesn't have the authority to do that to administrative law concerns, what kind of process are they going through to execute this, uh, to conscience and religious concerns of, I believe my employees should have a right to make those kind of decisions for themselves. I don't think it's my place, A, to know what their health status is, to, uh, to try to coerce them into doing something they don't want to do, So this is just the latest um, concern that has come out of DC, and there are many others. Um, We've talked about about some of those, Greg, and I just think it's really critical for our business leaders to understand that that these things will affect their businesses, uh, that kind of keeping their head down will not protect them, because frankly, those um, who are pursuing uh, this kind of cultural drive to shift us uh, toward and just a government control of how our, our business leaders run their businesses. This is coming. And if we do not stand up for what we believe, we're just going to get crushed. I really think we're seeing that in the way that sort of the woke corporate culture is responding to this moment. You're seeing the big corporations step in on issues that you look at them and go, what does that have to do with your business, right? Uh, and yet they're stepping into this space and they're, they're pushing us toward the left in our nation. And if there's not some kind of counterbalance, we are going to be shifting. Left. So that, that's the concern on my heart. Well, somebody might say, in fact, um, they don't like what a particular company might have been doing as to training protocol, right? Right. Um, American Express did whatever they did to train people in a certain way. Right. And there could be a Christian business leader listening saying, well, you know, they did that, but I'm not going to do that. And what you're saying is that might be mandated. Well, it's, uh, it may not be mandated. But it may be such a coercive push. Uh, One of the things we're hearing from our HR leaders, we do a monthly phone call with them. And one of the things that we're hearing from them is that there's this pressure to promote diversity, equity, and inclusion. Now, as believers, of course, we want to be diverse and we want to interact with different people in in our workplace. We want to be equitable in our treatment of people. You don't want to treat someone different because of the color of their skin or some other uh, disability or condition like that. And we want to be inclusive. These are things that as believers, we would say we want to treat everyone as being made in the image of God. And that is appropriate. But the way that the left has defined diversity, equity, and inclusion is very different than the way that you and I would talk about it, Greg. And that is the concern. We're hearing from our HR people. 
that the main um, group called SHRM, S-H-R-M, don't remember what it stands for, forgive me. They're pushing this training material that is so opposed to the kinds of biblical concerns uh, that our members would have and, and people who you represent. And so we don't want to have that forced um, on our companies. And the only way that's not going to happen is if we stand up. So Shannon, uh, someone listening might be saying, you know, I'm in, what, what would they do if they wanted to be a member? I know that it's not a, um, anybody can join type of enterprise. Right. So right. No, to learn more about us, they can go to christianemployersalliance.org. And our membership is actually very clear and easy. It's just not that everyone would want to join. We do have a doctrinal statement that's um, a very orthodox doctrinal statement. It's Trinitarian. It um, is similar to the Nicene Creed, which many say in their churches every Sunday. But it is a very orthodox statement of faith. And we also uh, require an affirmation of um, Christian ethical convictions that deal with things like life and biblical sexual ethics and religious freedom. So, so your, your corporate leaders who actually are seeking to live out, live out their faith in everyday life, those are the people who would be interested in membership in CEA. Great. And I hear rumors of a conference coming up. Uh, <laughs> yes, sir. You know, why really- someone could come to uh, if they wanted to. So maybe share a little bit about what's happening with that. What would happen if they came? Absolutely. I would love that, Greg. Thank you. So we are hosting our fall summit. Uh, November 8th and 9th, and um, it will focus on the two parts that I mentioned to you um, of who we are as CEA. There will be portions of it that will deal with religious liberty, policy, legal kinds of concerns, and there will be other parts that will deal with values-based health care and how we care for our employees as they're trying to deal with uh, coming out of this pandemic, which is very deeply affected so many. Um, and so we're, we're dividing our, our conversations around those two areas. We're also inaugurating two awards at our awards dinner, um, the Courage of Conviction Award and the Extraordinary Servant Leadership Award. And I'm, I'm not going to say more than that, but I'm really excited about those two things because we want to honor those who are living out conviction in their in their lives, but also those who are living out just beautiful servant leadership. And so that's that's how we'll be focused up, uh, at our summit. Great. So uh, we'll put that in the uh, in the uh, video as we continue on so somebody can know how to be in touch with you. Terrific. But, um, I wanted also to say that um, you know, maybe there's somebody listening that says, okay, so I remember the little sisters and the abortifacients, are you 486, et cetera thing. I remember the Hobby Lobby case, but it, it just feels like that was for the big organizations. And it, it seems so far away. If you were sitting down at a coffee shop with somebody and they just said what I just said, it seems so far away Mm -hmm. that I should have to get involved. What would you you say to them that they should do uh, when they're done listening to our chat today? Well, I mean, when you deal with, I'll I'll pick up the one we were talking about a few minutes ago, the vaccine mandate that has come down for um, employers with a hundred or more employees. That will have a $14,000 per violation a cost to the employer. And so if as a if as an employer you don't believe you should be requiring that of your employees, um, it's it is a huge cost to you to stand up and say, I really don't want to do that. Um, so the coercive power of government is significant. And and it we saw it in the little sisters of the poor, the, the Hobby Lobby and in our lawsuit standing up against the government on behalf of Christian business leaders. And we're seeing it now um, when we look at this vaccine mandate that has come out of the Biden administration. Um, In my view, the government was never intended to have that kind of coercive power. 
Um, and we need to push back against that so that our Christian business leaders can live out their daily life and run their businesses the way that they want to. Somebody I hope uh, that's listening might be uh, walking out to their HR uh, vice president and saying, uh, just a minute, um, does our healthcare program cover abortifacients? And what if they find out that their healthcare program does, what would they do? So two things. Uh, one, if they join CEA, we can provide um, a letter that they can share with their healthcare policy uh, company asking that that be removed from their, uh, from their policy. It's an absolute right under the national injunction that we won, that all present and future members of CEA are not required to have that in their healthcare policy. So that would be the first thing they could do is simply joining CEA would provide coverage for them. But if they wanted to go a step farther, uh, we do have an insurance program called Covenant Choice. It's currently only for uh, businesses with 100 or more employees. It's a newer plan that we're doing, but it is, um, it is a healthcare captive that's member owned. It is values based. And um, our focus is on serving our members and um, having a completely transparent plan that meets their needs and meets the needs of their employees. So those would be two things they could consider. Great. And uh, do you mind sharing what the cost is of joining CEA or would you rather? Well, it depends on the size of your employee base. So on the low end, if you have under 50 employees, it's $600 a year. And on the high end, if you have over 400 employees, it's $3,600 a year. So it's, it's um, a span over that. I, I would say that no matter how you slice that, it's less than the legal bill to defend yourself against yes. some of these future lawsuits. Absolutely. It is. Uh, frankly, I think it's too low, but <laughs> <laughs> we provide quite a service for uh, the size of our dues. I don't know. If, if I was a Christian business owner listening somewhere in America, I would rush to the website and sign up before you raise the price. That's what I would say. Well, that might uh, be a smart thing to say, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> um, and again, let me let me ask you to speak to that person you're hypothetically having coffee with somewhere in in the country. If they could be with you, just the two of you, nobody's listening. Mm -hmm. Tape recorders off, and they say, "I still feel like everything's kind of going okay for mm -hmm. me," um, but you're saying I should be concerned. Uh, what would you say to them? Well, you know, I think the first thing I would say is if you're not concerned, then um, let me put you on my weekly list and start sharing with you what's actually happening. And if after a month or six weeks of seeing what's happening, you're still not concerned, then maybe I can help you. But I really think that if people were informed about the kinds of things that are going on, and that's what we are seeking to do, it's really just inform them and serve them in that way, um, I think they would want to get engaged and do something to protect their businesses, their employees, and their communities. And I would say if you're listening and you're a Convene member, you should run, not walk to the uh, website and Christian Employers Alliance website and, and definitely become a member. We're actually so in your corner that we've invited you to be part of our conference in Ojai, California, May 4, 5, 6. So if you want to find out more about Shannon, you can go to convene2022.com. That's convene2022.com. And you're uh, welcome to look up the details May 4, 5, 6, 2022 in Ojai, California, and you can meet her in person. You can talk to her about uh, some of these things that we're chatting about. Mm -hmm. And she'll be there with Brad Dacus, uh, who I was privileged to introduce the two of you. And now you guys are working together. Yes, absolutely. It's It's been good to connect with him. And uh, we are on the same team. We're the legal side and the policy voice side. And so we work together on those yeah. things. And Let's, I'm excited about your conference. I look forward to being there in Southern California. It's going to be it's going to be a good, good time. Let's circle back for just a minute to one thing. 
that's the notion of you're really, uh, if you're a member of CEA, CEA is a shield yes. protecting you. I think there's some people who probably don't um, have the knowledge base on that. How does that work? Mm -hmm. So you get sued as an employer, but you're a member and... Well, the way it works is when CEA represents our members, like in the abortion and board of patient case, uh, we are also very shortly going to be filing uh, another lawsuit, probably the first week of October, which I won't talk more about right now, but stay tuned. What it means is that CEA goes out representing our members and any victory that we win is given to our members without those members having to be exposed. So our membership lists, Greg, are completely anonymous. The only way anyone knows if you're a CEA member is if you as an individual uh, corporate leader decide to say so. Um, we hold our lists as an anonymous list so that our members can be shielded from any concern with cancel culture. Um, so that, that is really one of the greatest benefits that we give is this associational standing where we stand in the place of our employers when we file a lawsuit on some issue of concern and they don't have to be exposed. Great, I appreciate that. So a voice, a shield, advocacy, a place to gather with like-minded people, a conference coming up, uh, very exciting things are happening and uh, congratulations on being the new president. And uh, can we just close maybe by having a moment of prayer for you? I feel like I would, that would love that. Thank you. Appropriate. Greg, I appreciate that. Father, there's so many people who uh, are feeling like things are normal, but they're not. And Shannon has decided to step into this role where she will no doubt uh, be uh, attacked. Um, as a leader, as a person, as a as a mom, as a as a wife, because she's doing such great work. So I pray you would build a hedge of protection around her. I pray that you would place angels around her home, her office, her family, and guard her and preserve her as the enemy would try to mm, engage with her and and tell her that she's not good enough. So uh, we, we call down your power and we call down your, your might and we call down your goodness and we call down all the attributes of, you, of your character that can come to bear on upholding Shannon and her team at CEA. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.